four million Americans have prediabetes, a condition with blood sugar levels that closely approach those of type 2 diabetes. And roughly 90% of people are unaware they have it. A new study shows doctors may be struggling in spotting the risk factors. Nearly 300 primary care physicians were questioned. On average, only 66% of prediabetes risk factors were correctly identified. The study also found one quarter of doctors may be incorrectly identifying patients as having prediabetes conditions when they actually have diabetes. Dr. Jeanette Neshawat is here with me now to explain. She is a board-certified medical doctor who specializes in family and emergency medicine. Dr. Neshawat, thank you so yes, much for being with us. It's my pleasure. Explain what pre-diabetes is exactly and how it might develop into type 2 diabetes. Sure. So, Tanya, pre-diabetes is the precursor to diabetes. And what happens is your body develops a resistance. It can't use the insulin that your body is making or it just can't make the insulin that it needs to get that glucose and that blood sugar into the cells so that we can lower your blood sugar levels. So what happens over time if, for example, you're sedentary, if you're overweight, um, if you have risk factors, and if you're not monitoring what you eat, you can go from prediabetes to diabetes. Um, and it's a matter of how high your blood sugar gets. So um, prediabetes, for example, if your blood sugar is more than 100 but less than 126, that puts you in that category. But then if if it gets up higher, then you're going to be diagnosed um, with a diabetes. And so then how important is preventative care if you are in the pre-diabetes stage? It's, it's critical. It's crucial. It's very important. And there's what's called the Diabetes Prevention Program, which can help you from reversing yourself from going from pre-diabetes to diabetes because diabetes can lead to heart disease, one of the most um, common causes of death in this country. Um, so it's critical to make sure that you've got your blood pressure under control, your cholesterol under control, that you're active, that you're watching what you eat um, because you can ultimately reduce your risk of heart disease and stroke and kidney failure and blindness, which is what diabetes can cause. And there is a, a stunning number of, of Americans, one in three, yeah, I believe, who yeah. already have pre-diabetes and yet yeah. are not aware that they have it. How can you be in this stage and not be aware just because you're not familiar with the symptoms? Sure. And, you know, sometimes in the early stages, you may not have symptoms, but some people, they might experience maybe excessive thirst. They might feel like they have to urinate often. And some people might feel maybe a little fatigued, a little sluggish, a little weak. And hopefully that will prompt them, go see your doctor and who will, uh, you know, put you through some um, blood tests to see what's going on. Is it your, your thyroid? Is it your cholesterol? Is it maybe prediabetes or even diabetes? That's that's why it's so important to see your doctor routinely, regularly, because if we can catch it early and, you know, and, and take it Mm -hmm. take control, we can potentially reverse it and prevent you from developing diabetes. But one of the alarming things of the study is it showed how many primary care physicians struggle themselves yeah. in recognizing the symptoms of prediabetes. What can we do to make sure people sure, are properly sure. screened? First of all, it's a gray area. And I think a lot of it comes down to barriers such as, such as lack of resources, lack of tools for, for doctors to manage and monitor in this gray area. Um, but it's very important. This is why it's so important to see your doctor routinely and regularly for routine physicals, blood work, so that we can catch it early or monitor you if you are on the brink so that we can reverse it. But early detection, early diagnosis usually right. um, is best. And who is yeah. it most at risk? You mentioned sedentary, yeah. overweight. Is there a genetic component? Sure, there, there can be a small genetic component as well, but also, your, you know, your age. Um, if you have a family history, your ethnicity, for example, African Americans or um, Native Americans, um, you are at a higher risk. And also, if you are overweight, obese, if you have high cholesterol, the, all these factors together can put you at a higher risk. So important to get yes. screened and see your primary Absolutely. care physician once a year, right? Yes. Dr. Yes. Jeanette Neshawat, thank you so much My for joining pleasure. us. Thank you, Tanya.